Hooray! We're gonna fight a boss. I'm not ready to fight the boss. The immune system is like the offensive line. Nobody pays any attention to it. Ah, no, shoot it in the face, ish region. I wish I could lift my arm up and shoot it when it's not directly across from me. Shoot! Shooting is not doing anything. I don't know what else I can do in here. Ooh, that did something. But it doesn't do anything anymore. What about... Arr! What about this one? That does nothing. I did a fluke again? Did I break the game once more? Up here. Ah! Okay, I made it brighter. Fall! Fall, you idiot! Ooh! Okay, I think I see a pattern here. Hit that... Oop, I wanted to go up, not down. Go up. Hit that one. Ugh! Yay! That seemed to work! Get over here. I hate jumping in this game. Now what... What determines if it's going to be the left side or the right side? I'm almost tempted to just jump down. Just to speed things up. Boom! Ah! Drone! Ow! Uh. Oh goody, that side again. So yeah, the immune system, nobody pays any attention to it till it screws up. Then of course it's in major trouble and everybody gets all pissy. Did that work or not? Normally it goes bzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
I've given security the slip and holed myself up in the old computer room, so I'm sure I'm secure for now. The thing is, though, 1213, a stray bullet seems to have lodged itself in a very inconvenient place. I can't stop the bleeding. I've demanded they send up a physician, but to be honest, I don't think they'll get here in time. And there are things you still have to know, 1213. My voice isn't working. I hope you'll appreciate having something to read on your trip down to the surface. This is the memo my assistant Deacon forwarded to the entire crew just before he committed suicide. Hopefully you'll understand why now. Understand everything I've got. Oh God, I can't, I can't see anymore. 1213, listen to me. Listen, I just want to say I love you. I'm sorry, you had to be born. Oh yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Self-esteem awesomeness. Hello. From administ from junior administrator Deacon to all staff. Deacon's voice was the demon voice, but I'm not going to be able to do that for the whole thing. I'm sitting at my desk with a gun barrel to my throat, trying to think of a reason not to pull the trigger. My world has rapidly gone insane, and the things on which I relied have been stolen from me and reduced to ashes. I'm sending this memo to the entire crew because you will find all find out eventually, and I would not wish another to find out in the same manner as I. These are going by pretty fast. It was Westbury who finally told me. I had suspected something odd about our situation almost since Project GFG began, but it was only yesterday that I summoned the nerve to confront him directly, and he told me, Santa Claus does not exist. <laughs> What did he tell you? You're, gonna, you're serious. You forwarded it to further consoles. Almost everything we have been told about Project GFG was a lie concocted by the board of directors and the small group of people who knew the truth from the beginning. The Muppets. We're working with Jim Henson Studios. At around day 10 of Tesla Life Orbital's running time, you all may remember that our access to telephones, internet, and other communication media was suspended. We forgot to pay T-Mobile or insert appropriate European cell phone company. The reason given for this was that we were beginning work on a covert government project that required utmost secrecy. Yes. This was an utter fabrication on the part of the board of directors. They were Muppets. You didn't realize that your CEO was named Stanton? Uh, Statler and your CFO was named Waldorf. Project GFG was not government sponsored, but was the sole brainchild of Westbury and the other administrators. They totally played you. By the way, okay, you're not alive. He doesn't have any blood, so he could have just been, you know, chilling. <gasps> The entire world is dead. On day 10 of our operations, some kind of cataclysm took place on the Earth's surface. Judging by the communication blackout, it almost certainly killed most, if not all, air-breathing creatures. The Earth's atmosphere is poisoned now, incapable of supporting human life. The reason why our communication was cut off was because there was no one with whom we could communicate. All the letters we have sent our friends and loved ones over the past year did not leave the station, but met with incineration in the reactor ports. The cause of the disaster is still unknown. All we could do was try to salvage this tragedy, hence Project Germ-Free Generation. It was not, as was implied, some immoral attempt on the government for super soldiers. Administration were trying to create humans with immune systems advanced enough to survive in Earth's new atmosphere, a race of scouts tasked with seeking what remains of human civilization. Had this scheme worked, perhaps we would have told the truth then, when there was room for a certain optimism in rebuilding our race. But the scheme did not work. As we are all aware, the virus we cleverly called Yellow Death killed or irreversibly mutated the entire germ-free generation save one. And while 1213 could easily survive in a toxic atmosphere, he is too sickly and brain damaged from the virus to be of any real use. There are now not enough resources to begin the project anew, especially not now most of the quarantine decks are infested with mutants. I am not one for drama or hyperbole, and I am reasonably confident in the statement that I have nothing left to live for. Now. <laughs> there is nothing left on Earth but death. There is nothing left up here but a wasted existence, the inevitable diminishment of our supplies, and a lonely end. Some of you may think me a pessimist. Maybe crops would be, could be cultivated on board the ship. Maybe the toxins will eventually dissipate. Maybe some kind of existence could be eked out. But I feel that as a child of modern-day sensibilities, I would only be a burden to such a society. Between death or continuing on a few tiny slivers of hope, I choose death. 
In a few minutes, I will send this memo, then move on into the darkness, and I pray history will forgive me, my, uh, forgive my exit if indeed something. It feels like a cliche, and I feel stupid just writing the words, but whatever scores you had to settle, whatever allegiances you owed, they are no more. Your destiny is in your own hands now. Do not dwell on the past. Concentrate on your uncertain future and whatever triumphs and falls may await you. I wish you luck. James Deacon, Junior Administrator. By the way, name of my new superhero, James Deacon, Junior Administrator. I like how everybody died face down. I especially like that scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Frickin' 90 shots to kill 10 guys. Ugh. Is that it? Now I know from the readme file that after you beat the game, you're supposed to the food court code is one two seven two one. Don't lose your ticket. Yeah, the readme file says that you have to beat the game twice to get a special ending. One two seven two one. And since you all know that code now, you can go ahead and beat it because you start right from the beginning in the food court. And you can just go up to that terminal and put in the code. That has been 1213, Episode 3. Goodbye.